Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the muscles involved for inspiration, also known as inhalation. Now, to begin, we need to go from the most basic principle to a little bit more complex to the most complex you need to understand. Very quickly, first thing is, you need to apply the concept of what's called Boyle's Law. Remember, Boyle's Law states that if you increase the volume of a container, you simultaneously decrease the pressure inside of that container. Now this is important to understand because gases will only move down a pressure gradient. So let's take a syringe, for example. If we were to pull down on the plunger of that syringe, pull it down, pull that barrel down, we increase the volume inside of that syringe. That means the pressure inside drops. Let's just say it becomes negative compared to the pressure outside. And what does gas do? It will move from a high pressure to a low pressure and moves into that syringe. That is the entire principle that underpins breathing, particularly inspiration. We wanna expire or exhale, what do we do? The opposite. We decrease the volume, increasing the pressure, and inside the pressure will be greater than outside, and that air will rush out. That's it, that's breathing, all right? So let's move now to this example. What we've got here is the trachea or, and the bronchi sort of merged together, and the thoracic cavity in the lungs, and we've got down here the diaphragm. And what we're also gonna have around here are some ribs, because we've got ribs surrounding the thoracic cavity, right? And we know that there's muscles between these ribs. We've got the external intercostal muscles and the internal intercostal muscles, right? Now, to take a breath in, inspire, inhale, the type of breathing that you're doing right now, sitting here watching this video, nice and relaxed, you're taking what we call a quiet breath. So the breath in that you are taking is called a quiet breath and it's around about 500 mils, which sounds like a lot, but it's not when you consider what we're gonna talk about next when it comes to a forceful inspiration. Now to take this quiet breath in, you only really recruit two muscle groups. The first is that of the diaphragm that sits underneath. Now the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. Even though it can contract unconsciously, it is a skeletal muscle. And if we were to take our diagram here of the rib cage, the sternum, the clavicle, the scapula, and the vertebrae, the diaphragm sits underneath here, and it's the anatomical barrier between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity below. So the diaphragm is actually sitting under here and it's attached to the ribs, it's attached to the sternum and it actually has attachments to the lumbar vertebrae. So the diaphragm is this dome shaped skeletal muscle attached to the ribs, attached to the sternum, attached to the vertebrae. And so if you were to look up and underneath, you would see it looks like the roof of a tent. All right, now that's the origin of the diaphragm, all of it coalesces and inserts to a tendon right in the middle. So if I were to look up at the diaphragm, the musculature of the diaphragm all moves in to where we've got this tendon in the middle. And what happens is if you contract all these muscles associated, these muscle fibers associated with the diaphragm, it pulls on that tendinous sheath. And what happens is the diaphragm goes from a dome shape to being flattened out. And that's what's happening here. So you contract the diaphragm, it flattens out. Now what does this do? It pulls down on the thoracic cavity. It's increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity, decreasing the pressure, and a little bit of air rushes in. All right, now, these external intercostal muscles here. The external intercostal muscles, their origin is at the bottom rib, and its insertion is at the rib above it. Right? So we've got these, and they're called external intercostals. And so the fiber or the fibers orientate up and out. So you've got these external intercostals up and out, up and out, up and out like this, right? These are the external intercostal muscles. 
Inter meaning between, costal meaning rib, right? So they're the between the rib muscles. Makes sense. So external intercostal, up and out. That's the fiber orientation. Now, what do these muscles do when they contract? They lift the rib cage. So these are the muscles here. They lift the rib cage up and out. That's further increasing the thoracic volume, further decreasing the pressure inside. It gets even more negative inside, which means the differential pressure means it's more positive outside comparatively and more air rushes in. So can you see that all you need to do to bring heaps of air in is to continually contract and recruit muscles that increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. So the basic muscles for your quiet breath, the two that you need to know for your quiet breath is the diaphragm and the external intercostals. Now the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve, which comes from C3, C4, C5, and you remember that by C3, C4, C5, keeps you alive. Because if this nerve doesn't work due to damage to this area, spinal cord injury potentially, the diaphragm will not contract. If that doesn't contract, your basic normal quiet breath will not happen. The external intercostals, that's innervated by thoracic nerves, numerous thoracic nerves. All right. They're the two major muscles for quiet breath. But let's just say we want to go for a run, for example. We want to bring more air in than 500 mils. Let's, we need to bring liters of air in. We need to recruit what we call the accessory muscles. So let's go through those accessory muscles. So first of which is going to be the sternocleidomastoid. Let's do it in a different color and let's write it up here. Sterno means sternum. Clido means clavicle. Mastoid is referring to the mastoid, right? Part of the temporal bone of the skull. So the sternocleidomastoid has its origins at the sternum and at the clavicle, particularly the manubrium here. So it's got origins here at the manubrium and at the clavicle. And these fibers come together and they insert in at the mastoid of the temporal bone. Now what happens if or when this muscle contracts? right? It's going to further lift everything up, increasing thoracic volume. All right, so that's the sternocleidomastoid. Next is going to be the scalenes. The scalenes have their, ins their origin at the cervical vertebrae, and they insert at the top two ribs. So they go down and insert at the top two ribs. So what do you think happens when the scalenes contract? Again, lifts the ribs up, increasing thoracic volume. So that's the scalenes. What else? What about pec minor? Pec minor has its origins at the ribs here. And it inserts at the coracoid process of the scapula. So this is pec minor. Now pec major also plays a role here. That's the larger muscle associated with the pecs. But again, what happens when this contracts? Lifts up and out the rib cage. Increasing thoracic volume, that's pec minor. If we then have a look at serratus anterior. And serratus posterior also plays a role here, but serratus anterior. So serratus anterior, upper eight ribs, on the lateral side of the upper eight ribs, you've got the origin of this muscle, right? And this muscle comes together and goes behind. So if we had the scapula here, right? Let's just draw the scapula up here, a real dodgy version of the scapula, right? So I've just pulled the scapula out. What happens is the serratus anterior comes around and it inserts at this medial border. So it inserts all along here. It's known as the boxer's muscle because when you punch, right, the scapula will slide around the rib cage. That's what, so if you pull on that, the scapula slides around the rib cage. Now again, serratus anterior, if the scapula remains fixed, helps to increase thoracic volume. 
So you can see we continue to recruit more and more of these muscles for breathing. Now the very last one I want to talk about is going to be the erector spina muscles. And this is a, a group of muscles, right? So it's not just one. Now we don't have the back here, but if we were to turn this around, the erector spina muscles has its origins at the iliac, at the sacrum, at the lumbar region. So right down the bottom and has various insertions as it moves up the vertebrae. And its job is when it contracts, you extend. Now look what happens. I contract my external, uh, I, I contract my erector spinal muscles, my thoracic cavity moves up, moves up, moves up, increasing thoracic volume, decreasing pressure, more air comes in. These are the muscles that we use for quiet inspiration and also for when we need to recruit accessory muscles for forced inspiration.